Here's your Alabama WX weather briefing video for this Sunday morning, the 9th of February. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. And a change to colder is coming, a change to wetter as well, and that's already underway tonight. Cold front is moving through north Alabama as I record this just after midnight on Sunday morning. And you can see uh, showers, uh, no real thunder left. There was some thunder maybe earlier uh, in the Tennessee Valley, maybe one or two lightning strikes. But uh, a couple of significant weather advisories, no warnings, nothing severe, nothing to worry about. Um, you can see the uh, bigger picture on the radar there on the left uh, with the um, GR2 uh, analyst image uh, loop here of the Birmingham radar on the right showing uh, showers and showers extending tonight uh, from along the Jackson to Cobb County line uh, in northeast Alabama approaching I-59 near Fort Payne there <clears throat> moving through uh, the Sound Mountain areas of Marshall County approaching Etowah County uh, eastern Blount County one of the stronger storms uh, is there uh, to the uh, northeast uh, to the north of Aniana uh, in uh, extreme eastern uh, Coleman County moving uh, into uh, extreme southern uh, Marshall County. Got uh, heavy showers, heavy downpours now across northern Coleman County, raining heavily in the city of Coleman. Uh, activity back to the west uh, through uh, Winston County moving into Walker, uh, moving out of Marion into Fayette, and moving through Lamar County uh, has weakened a bit uh, in the past hour or so. And uh, this activity is going to be in the Birmingham area by sunrise um, or a little earlier. Uh, cold front um, will be moving through. Temperatures are, are falling behind the front. Uh, not anything exceptionally cold, uh, but this is what things should look like uh, by 6 a.m. Um, across Alabama, according to the NDFD. We'll already be in the 40s in northwest Alabama, uh, maybe as far south as Coleman, certainly in Scottsboro. Uh, dropping to about 57 at Birmingham, uh, only falling, though, into the 60s uh, by that time uh, across central Alabama. The uh, front will make it a little further south, but the heating of the day will kind of offset the cooling, uh, the cold air advection. Uh, temperatures will fall to about 55, 57 in the Birmingham area. And they slowly make their way back up, but they're not really going to recover to the levels that we saw today. Of course, 82 at Montgomery at Danley Field was a record for the date, uh, beating the old record by one degree, set back in 1957. But you can see we might peak out around 60 around Birmingham, uh, 64 down around Calera, 63 over in Anniston and then temperatures begin to fall. So after sunset, we're in the 40s in northwest Alabama, uh, low to mid-50s uh, in north-central Alabama, and uh, falling into the 50s over the south-central part of the state as uh, we go through the evening hours. Now, by Monday morning, this is what temperatures should look like. Uh, 30s in northwest Alabama, they're going to be around 40, 42 degrees there uh, from places like Scottsboro over to Coleman down to Walker County. Uh, be middle, upper 40s uh, in the I-20 corridor with 50s over South Alabama. Now highs on Monday. Um, Birmingham about the fulcrum there, 60 to 63 degrees between Jefferson and Shelby counties. 50s to the north, 60s uh, over South Central Alabama with 70s over the southern part of the state. So we, um, we will take that. Uh, not too bad. Uh, this is uh, precipitation off the HRRR showing those scattered showers across the area today. They're not going to be heavy or not very widespread, but we will deal with them. So uh, be prepared uh, for some splash and dash showers. Looks like a little more organized showers moving into North Alabama there around 6 o'clock ahead of a secondary front. Uh, that's down into the Birmingham Aniston areas uh, there uh, a little bit after midnight, but you can see it's weakening as it goes. But we're not through with the showers. Uh, the showers extend into Monday morning, um, even though they pretty much cleared out of the northern third of the state. Uh, a few showers could move across the Tennessee Valley uh, during the evening hours. The GFS is our uh, model of choice. We'll start off with the upper pattern anomaly across North Alabama or North America. The bridging uh, is very pronounced there across the southern United States uh, with um, broad low pressure uh, across the northern uh, third of the country. Uh, extending into Canada. You see the ridging 
uh, continuing to uh, hold over uh, Alabama and the southeast through Monday. Into Tuesday, it begins to weaken, though. The uh, low pressure begins to organize over the western United States. A big trough begins to progress to the east. Here by Wednesday, it's moving into the Plain States. Uh, we're holding on to the ridging barely here, and it's going to be this battleground uh, between the um, ridging to the east and the um, uh, troughiness uh, to the northwest there that's going to set the stage uh, for a boundary to develop and lots of moisture to be advected across it. And as it does, that's going to mean several bouts of heavier rain. You see some ridging as we move into Friday, a little bit colder uh, system troughiness moves in there. Uh, by the weekend, that could set the stage for some pretty chilly air, a little uh, quick glancing blow. Uh, a little bit of ridging right behind it, though, that, that any kind of um, cold spell that we have will be fairly short-lived. That system becomes cut off there uh, from the westerlies, uh, but kind of regains um, its traction, moves into out of the plains into the uh, Arklatex, and then into the southeast there in week two. Uh, you see just a steady progression of systems, as we would expect this time of the year, after all, it is getting to be a very progressive time. Backing up the GFS here to Sunday morning, uh, showing those scattered showers across uh, north Alabama. Today, they'll be uh, kind of weakening and spreading to the south. A few scattered showers could continue uh, as we get into Monday. We look fairly dry. Um, I think we will see, you know, some element of precipitation uh, on Monday, but it's going to be, uh, you know, not very widespread and not really... Uh, much to deal with. You know, we'll kind of call for cloudy skies with a slight chance of rain shower. Uh, afternoon highs are going to uh, pivot around uh, 59, 60 degrees, 50 to the north, 60 to the south of uh, Birmingham. Into Monday night, I see a little bit of wintry precipitation breaking out there along the Missouri and Arkansas border. Uh, as we see that uh, intensify, some freezing rain is possible there. Snow will be possible back uh, through the Midwest, and you're seeing some snow developing in the Kansas City area Monday afternoon. They're going to get some decent snowfall amounts, I think, this week, uh, even though the GFS is not quite as bullish as they were uh, until really Wednesday and Thursday. Kansas could get some uh, decent uh, snowfall amounts. Nothing like that for us here. Uh, going back in time, you see that icing developing over northern Arkansas Monday night into early Tuesday morning. Uh, right there along the boundary, the heavy rain begins to move into Alabama Tuesday night into Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to say, you know, showers early during the day on Tuesday with a steady rain developing later in the day. You know, uh, actually we get, uh, you know, afternoon highs uh, climbing into the 60s. That's not going to be bad, you know, 66, 69 degrees, um, you know, with that warming. But there will be some pretty decent rainfall amounts. We could pick up you know, one and a quarter, one and a half inches of rain on Tuesday. About the same on Wednesday. As you see, we go through time, another impulse moves across. Perhaps a surface low developing there over Louisiana, shooting along the I-20 corridor uh, during Wednesday night. This could bring a chance of thunderstorms. As a matter of fact, this is what GFS instability looks like uh, late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. You know, Cape values... 200, 300, 350 joules per kilogram over central Alabama. So certainly some storms could be involved. Uh, some of those could be strong. Um, I don't think there will be widespread severe weather, but we could have an isolated uh, severe storm or two. Now, as we move forward into Thursday, things begin to improve. Showers in the morning, partly cloudy in the afternoon, a little bit cooler with highs in the, in the 60s uh, over south central Alabama, upper 50s to the north. Get into Friday, some clouds in the morning, mainly sunny sky during the day, though. Um, I think we'll see showers, though, uh, getting ready to return. You see there from the south, Saturday, Friday night into Saturday, and Saturday again looks wet. Uh, rain likely. Uh, some thunderstorms could develop in the evening if that low pressure system actually uh, begins to come our way. And you can see we've got a very dynamic system uh, over the weekend. This one uh, with a deeper trough, lots of cold air advection. That activity's out of here early Sunday morning. Uh, some snows to the north of Alabama, nothing like that for us here, but it will be turning sharply colder. We might see highs not getting out of the 40s uh, potentially on Monday. 
um, you know, 40s and low 50s on Tuesday. Uh, overnight low is going to be approaching freezing, certainly then, maybe even colder. We might be back in the 20s for a brief period there. But you saw that ridging. It develops back in pretty quickly. The high pressure moves off to the east. That means a return southerly flow. That's a pretty decent southerly flow returning here by Tuesday the 18th. Of course, we're well out into voodoo territory here. Uh, but more rain develops. A uh, pretty uh, dynamic system moves through here on Thursday the 20th into Friday the 21st. And that means some more pretty decent rainfall amounts. And by that time, we should just have about erased our drought. We looked at those instability values. These are rainfall amounts from the WPC. This is uh, the last word in uh, rainfall amounts. And this is through Thursday morning showing a fairly widespread north and central Alabama 2 to 4 inch rainfall amounts. Going to be common. And that's going to cause some rises on local creeks and eventually rivers. Uh, across Alabama. And if you go out on the GFS and you take the whole 384 hours, this is the deterministic model, uh, of course. And I, of course, it looks like I killed our um, killed our GR Earth there. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> got that back for you now, showing that radar loop uh, as we're approaching 1215 here on Sunday morning. But you see some pretty decent rainfall amounts. And if this plays out and the signals are there, uh, these rainfall amounts could be pretty heavy, um, you know, uh, over the areas along and north of I-20, uh, 5 to 10 inches of rain, not out of the question over the next 16 days. We'll see how that plays out. Um, you know, got a long way to go to look at that. And a lot of, lot of model runs, uh, of course, uh, between now and then. I need to really recenter that. But this is kind of what your uh, National Blender models temperatures look like over the next uh, uh, several uh, several days, really 10 to 12 days. 60 today, 59 tomorrow. We climb back into the 60s Tuesday and Wednesday. We kind of hang in the low 60s uh, on average Thursday and Friday. A little warmer next Saturday and Sunday. Then we cool off. Blender models calling for 53 Monday, 59 on Tuesday. And then uh, back up. It's the Alabama roller coaster. We are halfway home to spring, um, a little bit over halfway. And, um, you know, all the uh, various accompanying things that come with uh, late winter, springtime uh, conditions in Alabama, heavy rain, thunderstorms, uh, bouts of cold air. You know, we've got it all. Well, that's your weather briefing video for this Sunday, the 9th of February. I'll have notes on the blog, a complete update on the seven-day forecast coming up for you by noon with a few notes uh, at that point, too. I'll be back next Sunday. Scott will be here next Saturday. James will have two days all week. And as I always tell you, until I get the chance to see you again, keep an eye to the sky because you're always going to have something fun to look at.